Hi, once again, this is Miraj. Uh, as uh, this, say, this presentation, uh, this research was also carried out by Dr. Villa and Dr. Alam, as I have mentioned before. And I am going to present on behalf of them since they couldn't come. So the topic is plastic hinge length of shape memory alloy bars, the reinforced concrete beach columns. It has some similarities with the previous uh, presentation. So I think it will be shorter than that one. So uh, background is again the same. Uh, uh, we, if we look at the residual performance, uh, residual par or the permanent deformation, uh, and usually the residual or permanent deformation sustained by a structure after a seismic event dictates the post earthquake functionality of the uh, bridge pairs. And specifically for highway bridges, it is very important to keep. Uh, it is very important to keep the bridge open to traffic and to determine the feasibility of repair. So we need the residual per, uh, evolution of the residual permanent deformation. And if it's, we can see successive residual strain accumulates large permanent deformation in uh, the conventional bridge piers. As I have shown before, the conventional in the conventional beach uh, steel, we have a permanent set or a large uh, inelastic deformation. But in terms of shape memory alloys, it reverts back to its original position. It has the unique ability to return back to its or original position. That's why we are saying repeatedly that it is a strong content, uh, contender for use as a reinforcement in the bridge piers. Here we can see two pro, uh, different properties of the SMA bars. In the first figure, we can see the comparison of the recovery strain and the elastic modulus of, of different types of SMA bars. And from the top figure, we can see that is the iron, nickel, cover, aluminum, titanium, and uh, boron bar, which has the re uh, very good recovery strain. And, and the second iron based. Uh, iron-based SMA, uh, which is shown in the green, that is the iron, manganese, aluminum, and nickel. It has very good elastic modulus. And we can see the nickel-based SMA in the middle. It has a uh, reasonable, um, uh, reasonable proportion of both recovery strain and elastic modulus. And on the right, figure on the right-hand side, we can see the stress strain uh, or the his history response of the two uh, different bar. And in the, uh, the green one, the green bars are the nickel, uh, we call it NITI, nitinol uh, SMA bars. It has, it can undergo very large stress, but the strain uh, performance is not that good. And it has a, a fat, uh, fatter hysteresis loop as we can see in the green figure. And on the middle part, we can see the copper, aluminum, and manganese uh, SMA, which has reasonable amount of stress and strain. And if we look at the uh, iron-based SMA bars, they, they have very good amount of strain. They can undergo around 15, per, uh, uh, over 13% of strain at the room temperature. And uh, the, uh, it has very high super strict stra strain range. And it, it is almost as the, uh, double as the nitinol, nitinol uh, SMA bar alloys. So what is the objective of our research? Here we, uh, we have three objectives to estimate the plastic hinge length of the SMA bridge piers. Then we are going to propose an equation to predict the plastic hinge length. And this will be validated using experimental results performed by other researchers. So here we can see the methodology. So uh, why, why are we using SMA bridge piers? We, uh, we can assume that the, uh, during an, any seismic event, the maximum, uh, maximum inelastic, inelastic curvature or the plastic hinge will be uh, uh, concentrated, uh, concentrated on a small portion, maybe on the bottom, and we are calling it the plastic hinge. And, and for, uh, to, uh, we are trying to determine the length of this plastic hinge, uh, plastic hinge region. 
based and we are doing this research based on the result from well calibrated non non nonlinear finite element model for this reason we did a parametric study to investigate the effect of different parameters on the plastic hinge region the uh, parameters include axial load ratio then aspect ratio then the compressive strength of the concrete then the properties or yield stress of the uh, SMA bars and longitudinal and transverse reinforcement. Here we can see the methodology. So at first the parameters were selected, the, then the finite element model was uh, developed. This is similar to the previous presentation. So I'm not going into the details. Then the model was validated using cyclic loading strain profile. And then the result analysis or the effect analysis was done. Then we derived an plastic hinge length expression, as we can see here. And this expression was validated with the experimental results. Here are the details of the variables that we used. Three different values of each variable were used, and we, there were total six variables, axial load, the longitudinal reinforcement, aspect ratio, concrete compressive strength, the transverse reinforcement ratio and the uh, different types of SMA or the yield strength of the SMA. And the values are shown on the right side column. Again, for this uh, analysis, we uh, assume the bridge pair were located in Vancouver, British Columbia, and it was designed using Canadian Highway Bridge Design Code. So in total, these six number of parameters and three, three different values provided us with total 18 number of different bridge pairs. And for our analysis, one parameter were, were kept constant and uh, for uh, each analysis and the other, uh, other uh, for each analysis, one parameter were kept constant and for the next one, then one par the second parameter were kept constant in total so at 18 number of analysis were performed. So here the, is, uh, here is sh we show the finite element model and its validation. Again, the SMA bars are provided in the plastic hinge region and uh, steel reinforcement are provided on the top and couplers are provided in between them. And these couplers are uh, shown in the finite element as the zero, zero length rotational spring, as we can see in the second figure. And for this analysis, total 11 number of segments were used, as we can see in the third figure. The first three segments were for the SMA bars and the top eight segments were for the uh, steel bars. And here we can see the validation of the uh, validation with the experimental experimental results. Validation was done on in terms of two criteria. One is the strain, longitudinal strain, and the other one is the curvature. <clears throat> so, and this experimental analysis for the strain was performed by Nakashoji and Saidi, and we compared the result here so for the first figure the, uh, we can see two different types of drift level one is one person and the other one is second person and we can see very good correlation between the experimental and the predicted value and if you look at the second figure for curvature it was also it was done by o'brien et al in 2007 using two different types of drift levels one is 1.5 percent and the other one is three percent and again, we can see very good correlation between the experimental and predicted values. Uh, it is worth to mention that the first uh, experimental analysis by Nakashoji and Saidi was performed using square bridge, uh, square bridge piers of 18 inch, uh, 18 inch square bridge piers. And the uh, second analysis done by O'Brien was conducted on one fifth scale of a bridge pier and it was a circular bridge pier and the plastic uh, height of the plastic hinges are shown in on the vertical axis now if we look at the result this uh, these two figures shows the effect of axial load on uh, number one is for the curvature and the uh, second one is for longitudinal reverse strain 
we can see from the figure that the car garbage profiles do not show any effect of the axial load. But the longitudinal stress uh, reverse strain has some effect on the uh, on the, uh, the low, uh, axial load has effect on the re reverse strain. If you see that if the load is increased from five percent to one percent, uh, five percent to ten percent, and after to twenty percent, the uh, longitudinal reverse strain is increasing because of the axial load. And this, the next figure, it shows the effect of the aspect ratio. Again, we can see that the curvature doesn't have any effect on the, uh, sorry, the uh, aspect ratio does not have any effect on the uh, curvature. I won't say any effect, it has very less effect on the curvature. But again, the plastic hinge length increases with increasing aspect ratio, we, uh, as we can see from the right figure. The three types of aspect ratios are length, uh, aspect, by aspect ratio, I'm, I'm saying length by diameter. So the one is three, the second aspect ratio is five, and the third one is seven. So as we see, it is it, it increased from three to five. The plastic hinge length is also increasing. In this figure, we can see the effect of different types of SMA properties or the different types of SMA yield strength, we can see that if we increase the yield strength from 200 MPa to 450 and then to 750 MPa, the plastic hinge, hinge length is again increasing. So we can see that the, we can say that the plastic hinge is dependent on the uh, yield strength of the SMA is used. But in the fourth figure, we can see the effect of the longitudinal reinforcement ratio on the plastic hinge. And we can see from the second figure that plastic hinge and linge hinge tends to decrease with the increase in longitudinal reinforcement ratio. And also, also the same phenomenon can be observed for in terms of curvature, but uh, the increase is more prominent on the second figure that is the longitudinal reverse strength. And in the, this figure, we can see the effect of trans, uh, transverse reinforcement ratio. It has similar, uh, 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 similar property as the longitudinal reinforcement ratio, as we can see here. The change in plastic in region is more pronounced in the st strain profile than the curvature profile. And we can see uh, if we uh, increase the uh, transverse reverse uh, transverse uh, reinforcement percentage the plastic hinge re uh, region tends to decrease and this, in this last figure we can see the effect of the compressive strength on curvature and longitudinal reverse strain and we you can see to the, from the figure that the plastic hinge region is kind of independent of the concrete strength and we can see if the strength is increased from 35 MPa to 60 MPa, plastic hinge, uh, plastic hinge region decrease a little bit. So based on the numerical analysis and the analysis we have shown before, we derived an expression for the plastic hinge region, as we can see from this figure. This is the main contribution of this research development of uh, expression of the plastic hinge region. So this was done using the data obtained from the numerical investigations and we performed the regression analysis to derive this equation. And these equations uh, the, were com compared with the experimental results as we can see in the gra uh, graph. And we had uh, derived the value of the mean standard deviation and coefficient of variation, as we can see. And these values do, uh, look pretty good. And, and these are quite reasonable estimate of the plastic hinge region, as we can see from the comparison with the experimental results. So to conclude, in this research, we propose the plastic hinge length of the SMARC bridge pairs, and this the proposed equation was validated using experimental results. That's
all from my part. And again, if you have any questions, I have shown the email address of Dr. Billa and Dr. Alam. You can read, direct the questions to them or I can note it down for you. Thank you so much.